Got a good one right here. Power Tripping Cups. These Power Tripping Cups are thirsty for action. I think there's going to be collaboration in a couple stories. So we'll start with number one right here. Off-duty cop falsely accused his kid of stealing a bike. Oh, I think I remember this one. Check it out. Student was falsely accused of stealing a bike. Off-duty cop comes and does this to him. I remember this. Wow. Put up a picture of this cop who falsely accused a young teenage scholar. Yeah, look at this. Look at this real piece of work. A bike. Keep this picture up. Chicago police, they have now opened an internal investigation after a man claiming to be an off-duty officer was captured on cell phone, pinning a teenager to the ground outside a Starbucks. In and did you also notice in that video, that stupid cop, an off-duty officer, he put his knee on that teenager's back, right near his neck area. That's why all the people are like telling him to get off of him, and you know, I mean, what, what, what is he had? What is he pinning that kid for? Was he afraid the kid's gonna go and run away? Yeah, and he, this stupid cop accused the kid of stealing a bike. Accused him instead of doing to that mambo jumbo bullshit. Park Ridge, while the off-duty cop uh, name has yet to be released, it has been confirmed by the Park Ridge Police Department that he is in fact a Chicago police sergeant. Wow. Sergeant means he's a supervisor. It also means he's been there a long time. Yeah, he's been there a while. Let's put up a picture of the 14-year-old victim of this off-duty cop. The 14-year-old victim, who, by the way, is of Puerto Rican heritage, is a straight-A student, three-sport athlete, an active member of his youth ministry, one of the most amazing teenagers in the United States of America. Okay? So what led up? to this off-duty cop deciding to harass and criminally assault this 14-year-old scholar? In a Facebook post, the child's mother, Nicole uh, Naives of Park Ridge, says it happened on Friday when the child moved a bike that was blocking the sidewalk. So understand where this came from. He moved a bike that was blocking the sidewalk. She said the man apparently believed he was stealing the bike even though the teenager had a bike at his side. Now, wait a minute. You're supposed to be a whole sergeant at a police department. You're a detective. You're an investigator. You see a 14-year-old with his own bike moving another bike, and you think he's going to steal the other bike while riding his own bike. Now, tell me, sergeant, how would this work in, in real life? I'm not talking about on the cartoon. How would this work? What did you see happening next? Was he going to pick up the bike and then ride his own bike? Was he going to leave his bike? I mean, yeah. Well, what was he going to do? Leave his own bike for one of his friends to take his bike and, and, and uh, take off and steal the other bike and say, "Yeah, hey, we now we got two bikes." No, no, no. like he like he said, the kid's a straight A student. He probably, the kid probably knows right or wrong. He take you know the kid you know he's probably one of those kids that that will work hard like that. He ain't going to be five figure decent decent and trying to steal anything. That's crazy. And for that cop to exert that, you know, desert that uh, authority? Crazy. Get out of here. And, and then steal the other bike. Was he going to lift the bike on top of his head while getting away on a bike? How did this work out in the sergeant's mind? Allegedly, the cop's son's bike had recently been stolen from a nearby location and made the assumption that the 14-year-old did it. Wow. This adult did not use words. He used force. He used his hands, grabbed our son's wrist, body slammed him, then held him with his knee to restrain him, regardless of the circumstances. Getting physical with a minor as an adult for any reason other than self-defense is unacceptable, according to the mother. And I agree with the mother. Exactly. In the video, you can see and hear 
the uh, friends um, who are white defend him. Yeah. They said, wait a minute, what are you doing here? Uh, so let's You're go telling to the parents that, that, that sergeant, get off of him. Young victim. That's Nicole and Angel, who believe the attack was racially motivated. Uh, I definitely agree with them. Yeah. Uh, they believe their son was racially profiled because he is uh, because he has long curly hair and darker skin. We've talked to our and they, they probably figured that out. Like, oh, he looks like a foreigner. Moment for years, we can't possibly put into words how we're feeling: disgust, anger, frustration, outrage, fear, sadness. Rhode Island police slammed and handcuffed a man, slammed his head into the pavement. Here comes another one right here. Here's the video. Rhode Island police slammed handcuffed man. Yeah. The man was handcuffed. He was going nowhere. Now, I'm going to give you some detail. The video is a little grainy. It, yeah. So the start of this video, which has been reviewed and independently verified by Target 12, shows Captain Stephen Goncharalo and Lieutenant Matthew Jennett, wrestling Providence residents Armando Rivas, 21 to the ground, and handcuffing him. That's what it shows. All right. So the captain is then seen holding the victim down with his knee as the other officer makes a call on his police radio. Soon after, the captain grabs the victim by the hair and hits the suspect's head on the roadway. One of the officers is then heard yelling, stop moving, as the captain continues to hold his head against the ground this is the victim all right his name is armando mondo who had left his jeep cherokee parked unattended in the travel lane at the fireworks display in indiana park point july 3rd that's all he did this is one of the cops one of the cops in the video uh this is the captain a 25 year veteran who was the one that slammed his head into the ground. The other officer in the video is Lieutenant Matthew Jennett, who has been on the force for 17 years. Now, let me remind everybody, at this point, these are veterans of the police force. These are individuals that have rank, they have position, they have supervising powers. They create the culture. They protect the culture. They teach the culture. They are the biggest nightmares on the police force, the biggest ones. According to the police report, when the two officers tried to clear the area of traffic they decided to have uh the jeep towed the police report also stated by the way it's a lot of lies here uh rivas returned to the car while it was in the process of being towed and shouted profanities at the officers that's according to one of the reports and tried to get into the car the report says that officer janet then tried to arrest the suspect who was wildly attempting to break free and another cop tried to restrain him. So the captain, according to his narrative, ran to the scene and joined the attempt to restrain the individual. They go on to describe the captain as using a palm heel strike, a police technique, to the head of the victim prior to him being placed in handcuffs. The report does not mention the slamming of the head which is seen in the video 12 seconds after you see the handcuffs being placed on the individual here. Um, so they left out pertinent information on the police report. That's called a lie. You see, a lie is what you say or don't say. A lie is what you provide or do not provide in order to deceive someone else. That's a lie. It can be commission or omission is my point. 
While the video doesn't necessarily show the entire incident, it shows enough to know the cops lied on the report. Uh, the incident was not captured by neither of the officer's body cams um, because the captain has not been issued one, according to him. Providence Police Commissioner, let's put him up. His name is Stephen Perry. Was unaware his officers weren't wearing body cams, so he's pleading ignorant. A statement made by the commissioner says, and I quote, they were using force in this disturbing of what I have seen thus far. There is a lot more we need to do on what led up to it. And perhaps witnesses can fill in some. But the 30 second clip I have seen is concerning. And that is why we initiated a review along with the attorney general's office so we can review it and look at the policy. The report also claimed that the victim was reaching for his waistband during the struggle. <laughs> Once again, where police found a knife in his uh, waistband, according to the report. Um, we believe it indisputable that the police actually added that uh, in order to justify the severe violence they did to this person. Yeah. Absolute, dis absolute disgrace. How power tripping, ego statistic, hungry media, some cops, cops are. With that said, I'm under my job. Peace out.